So don't take this the wrong way, but there's really like three and sometimes four if we're having a really crazy year. But there's really three times in the year where I really miss working with you. And one of those times is WWDC. <laughs> because I, I, I'm trying to watch it, right? I'm trying to do the stream. And I'm just like, you know what? This would be way more fun if I had this pulled up on two 80-inch monitors in a room with just me and Philip. Absolutely. But no more. Now I just have to watch it whenever on my own by myself. While you're sending me messages and I'm like, hey, I, I'm not watching this right now. You're going to have to stop. You're going to have to stop sending me uh, spoilers, essentially. I, I I'm made sure that they weren't spoilers. They were close. But they weren't. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when I was watching uh, Game 7 of the Western Conference Finals, but I was streaming it and you were watching it live. And, uh, you know, there's a good 30 second delay. And I was afraid you were going to tip me off the wrong way. No, I would would never do that. But that all worked out. Um, Before we dive in, there's a quote that led off, I mean, really early in the in the in the uh, keynote. Where Tim Cook says, we aim to put the customer at the center of everything we do. I just want you to, I want to come back to that later, maybe. Because I'm just like, "Um, yeah, maybe. It just, it was, it was funny for them to put that at the very beginning, which, I mean, it makes sense for them to do that. But it just kind of stuck with me as we were going through the announcements. Some of it, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, we'll come back to that. So four, four OSs, they pretty much at the beginning just say, hey, this is all about uh, software and platforms. Well, they said that exactly. Yeah, we're not, what they didn't say though, which they did say, but they didn't say was, hey, Philip, if you want to, if, you, if you're expecting an iPhone SE 2, just stop. I felt that when they, when they said, we're just talking about software today. And uh, I still have, I know this is neither here nor there for WWDC, but it is now. Uh, I still have this hope for it in the fall, for better or for worse. We will see. It's kind of like, though, to, to me, and here we are, we're already on an SE tangent before we even got going, but we'll just take a little side road here. I kind of feel about the SE like I did about the iPad Pros, where the iPad Pro 12.9 comes out first, right? And then in March, the following year, the 9.7 comes in. And then you get a, what, like a whole year before, boom, you get a refresh of both lines. Yeah, a whole 15 months there. Yeah. And, 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 but then they're equal. I mean, you get the new size with the 10.5, but in terms of features, the only thing that's really different between the two iPads at that point is just screen size. Um, I'm kind of feeling like maybe that's what's going to happen here with the SE where it's just like, eh, we're just going to wait and, and we're going to, we're going to release a whole slew of phones in the fall and it's going to be madness, but no point to, tip our hand early here with the SE because maybe it's going to look like the other phones that they're going to announce this fall. Well, it certainly feels like with, with, I mean, especially with the uh, Animoji and FaceTime and the Memoji and all that, like I don't see them coming out with another phone that doesn't have the camera array or whatever it's called. Um, you know, that that creates the notch. I don't see him coming out with a phone that, that doesn't have that given how far they're pushing into that. Yeah. With, with how they're updating the software, which really just makes it an all or nothing roll of the dice to me, because that either means to me, they just don't come out with an SE. And I, I do just feel like, you know what, when fall comes, it's either it or it's not like it, it can't happen after fall. If it doesn't happen, then it's never happening. You know, if, if they, if they yeah. come out with, if they come out, whatever they come out with, with in the fall is what's moving forward. And 
nothing's coming out different after that, like the SE. But if they do come out with an SE, I feel like it's got to be a 10 style design, which would be incredible. Speaking, so it's either incredible, incredible or nothing. Speaking of the SE and old phones, they start off the keynote with, with iOS 12, right? Which I thought was weird that they started off with iOS. Yeah. Just first off. Yeah. You kind of feel like, oh, maybe that'll be the last thing, right? Yes. That'll be our closer. Because it's by far the biggest platform that we have. Uh, but they come out of the gates talking about iOS 11. And one of the things that kind of struck me was they, they were laying out like all the different you know, phone models that iOS 11 worked on. And of course this leads to the eventual revelation that iOS 12 was also going to work on all those lines, but they go all the way back to 2013 devices and and specifically mission the the iPhone 5S. So um, all of this focusing on performance, which is neat, but I don't know. I'm just like, I guess if I still had an older, you know, phone like that, I'm just trying to think like the audience he's talking to, like, it's not, I just didn't feel like it was super relevant to them. But as developers, I guess they probably interact with customers who have older phones and, you know, they want their stuff to work at least somewhat well for as far back as you can. I guess it it just widens the customer base. But I just thought it was funny, a funny way to start off the keynote talking about the iPhone 5S. <laughs> it didn't really get it. That is interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't really thought about it quite that way. Um, it it does make me it does make me feel like if they're going to keep the 5S alive and kicking i mean if that 4 inch phone is alive and kicking why not just add another <laughs> and this time it does not be a 4 inch phone this could be like a 10 style you know 4 inch phone that's not 4 inches at that point but, but yeah that, that's interesting for that audience because heck that that audience of developers i don't know may actually prefer that they push it forward like like they did like they did and we'll get to the to the watch and how that's no longer no longer gonna run on you know watch os 5 won't run on series here but i've got some thoughts about we'll talk about we'll talk about that then but obviously developers are interested in that you know I, i listened to the David Smith and Marco Arment on uh, the most recent Under the Radar. And they were talking about how that's great, especially in the case of the watch, because that that Series Zero watch is half as half as fast as the oh, Series gosh. One. So, I mean, you really were just hamstrung by it in development. And so not having to worry about that one just really frees you up to do a lot more, you know, especially, I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to create a, you know, honest to God podcast app that runs natively on the watch as we get just forward and forward and forward into things, um, then not having to worry about how that's going to run on the series zero somehow is is a huge benefit to a developer. Yeah. And I think it's also coming out this way. They're kind of in some damage control from the whole battery performance issues that they had to deal with in the fall and how they were, you know, they were down clocking, you know, processors and stuff to keep it from, you know, to keep it from just shutting down and, and, you know, all of that nonsense. I think that kind of plays into some of this too, but for them to be able to come out and say, Hey, uh, you know, this release, essentially we're focusing on performance. We're, we have a lot of features. We're going to get into that, but, um, you know, we're trying to make it a better experience for all of our users or as, you know, as far back as we can you know, possibly go. Um, but Hey, improvements for older phones, also means improvements for the, the newer phones too, right? I mean, that's true. It's, it's going to work, you know, better for the, for them too. Well, I've seen reports that, um, that five S's, I mean, people that are testing five, five S's, um, are seeing it be faster on iOS 12 than on iOS 11. Um, and I mean, a, a video I watched from nine to five Mac was one of the things they tested with just geek bench scores with it. This was an iPhone 10, but they took an iPhone 10 and ran the geek bench score. And then they took an iPhone 10 with iOS 12 and run the Geekbench score and granted like that's on a beta even, and it mm-hmm. had a faster score. Oh, wow. So, I mean, it, it really is promising that 
that they really are focused on that. And I mean, the things that they mentioned, um, you know, the keyboard loading quicker, uh, the camera, the camera is a big one, right? Oh, that's huge. Right. Which I mean, that's, that's something they've talked about in the past, just getting it to load quicker and quicker. Because if you think about like, uh, like certainly the three GS, I remember like the camera, (laughs) especially in, especially in later and later OS is it could take four seconds for your camera to be ready. And you remember that, you know, you get that shutter. Yeah. <laughs> you should be like, you got to open so I can take a picture. How so, barbaric. Right. Um, I mean, they had, they had most of that handled ish by the, by the iPhone five. Like when, when I was really taking pictures of kids, um, it wasn't quite so bad, but I, I, mean, I can imagine that if you're trying to take a picture of a kid, like you and I oh, often yeah. do, like four seconds is an eternity. Like they're off to a third activity by that time. So it's done. It felt weird that they started this way, but the more we're talking about it now, I'm like, this is a good, I mean, it can only be a good thing for all iPhone users or iOS users. They then go into this, you know, kind of like talking about the different apps and updates they made, the lead off with photos. I don't want to go too much into photos, but I just want to say this is still a tough sell for me with, with photos because I'm kind I'm like, I did the deal with the devil a long time ago. And I'm into Google Photos so deep that I just don't know. I don't know what they can do really to get me to come back. And from a feature standpoint, like they're starting to get sort of in parity with Google Photos. But then on top of that, I'm I'm one of those monsters who is still using the free <laughs> iCloud tier. So I just don't I just don't see a way for me to come back to to photos. Sell me on it. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, Are you on the Google Photos devil deal too? So I've I've been into Google Photos at one point and then like got out of it, just didn't stay in it. Um, and eventually started with a dollar iCloud plan and then I've gone to $3 at this point um, for the 200 gigabyte plan. Um, just because it makes it just so much easier. I mean, your devices, like all of our devices, I mean, the kids' iPads and our iPad, and my iPad and our phones can actually back up without telling you every morning that they, right. that they couldn't. And and that you've got the photos, um, you know, backed up, which is great. I mean, somewhere just to I me, mean, it's the easiest way to do it, obviously. I mean, it's the native way to do it. Um, but I mean, if if you've got, Google or Amazon or whatever it is, you know, I think Dropbox does it as well. But, um, I mean, if you've got photo backup, you know, set up there, yeah, then it's set up, it's going. And and that's really what you need the bigger storage tier for in iCloud is all the photos, right? Oh, absolutely. So if you're using a third party to do that, then you can kind of still skate by on the, the five gig <laughs> plan. Well, I say that. So, I mean, I don't know. Do you and Brittany have different Apple IDs? So yeah, we we have different Apple IDs, but then we use um, my Apple ID for the App Store. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we share purchases that way. Um, we set it up that way before they had, you know, before family sharing was a Absolutely. thing. And I've just never, I've never gone back and rethought how we're, you know, how we're using this paradigm. But yeah, we have separate separate uh, iCloud IDs for that specific reason of you know backups. Yeah, I mean, my whole house just has my Apple ID. And that's it. That would be problematic. So, <laughs> so, I mean, there are, I mean, I think I have, I was going to say 30, it's probably closer to 20, you know, Apple devices that at some point in time have been activated with my Apple ID. Um, and I mean, like currently probably like seven or eight. So yeah, I mean, just, just, just to back up even just bare bones, um, we need we need some more iCloud storage. I mean that's that's totally worth it. It's a great. It's cheap. I mean their 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 paid options are actually really pretty good. It's the free option that's <laughs> such a travesty, but they have no incentive to change that because their paid options are you know they're reasonable. <laughs> Absolutely, except for the fact they're they're logically reasonable, but. They're not, I mean, Jason Snell has mentioned this more recently too. I think that like charging a dollar for that 50 gigabytes is just 
a net negative for Apple as a company and as a brand and as a con- as a consumer facing piece. Like people are just not going to pay it, but they're not going to have their devices backed up. I mean, just the number of hours spent by Genius Bar employees dealing with <laughs> dealing with people complaining to them that they don't have yeah. their stuff now. Angry folks. Right. They would just be avoided by the fact that if they would have had 50 gigabytes, their their devices would have kept backing up instead of stopping, you know, um, for, or if weeks, they had for just weeks on end. sold their soul like I have and had Google Photos. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. So, but you know, I mean, lay people aren't going to set that right, up. Lay right. people, But lay people are not going to pay the dollar either, which is totally nonsensical and like some non-lay paid, people won't pay the dollar no absolutely <laughs> um, but at least those people know better i feel and <laughs> yeah. can blame themselves right. more than apple if it, if it comes to that um but actually i mean one of the reasons why i decided to bite the bullet and pay even the three dollars was because when i bought this uh macbook pro for blair to use for graduate school I was debating whether to get the 128 gigabyte or the, or bump it up to the 256. Well, bump it up to the 256 was like an extra $200. Mm-hmm. And if you look at, if you look at just paying a little bit more to get, to get iCloud storage that, you know, you could just keep the photos there. So you don't have to keep them on the device. Well, now yeah. I don't need the 256 and now I just save myself $200. I can pay $3 a month for a whole lot of months yeah, before, before, I'm you hitting, get to $200. before I get to $200. So, yeah. um, so, I mean, especially for those that are, that are in the ecosystem all the way, you know, like I am and like you are, then I think it can, can easily be worth it. Next up, Siri shortcuts. Looks an awful lot like another app that we used Absolutely. to know. Do you ever, have you ever used workflows? I have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For just minimally. I mean, yeah. I have two workflows that I use pretty frequently and that I still use even to this day. Um, I, f- I feel like I would dive more into it if I just had, if I would just sit down with it and like really look at it. But then once they got bought by Apple, I was just like, I'm not even gonna, mm-hmm. I still use the two workflows that I have. And, uh, what, what are those for? So I have one for like calculating a tip, you know, real simple. Right. But I have it saved on to the home screen somewhere. Mm-hmm. So it's easy to, to launch it. And then the other one I use, uh, quite a bit was, you know, if I was leaving work or wherever I could just do a, the quick recipe to text Brittany, you know, I'll be home this many minutes or yeah, whatever. About that. I that, don't, that's what I thought about the most, but you know, it, I, I, I think with something like what they're doing now with having it so embedded into the OS, they can become even smarter, you know, and some of the demos that they showed, especially with things like the suggestions that it can do. Um, the, the example I just said of, Hey, text Brittany, I'm on my way home. Well, I would always forget to to kick that off, you know, mm-hmm. not that it mattered. It wasn't like life or death. But, you know, if I was going walking to my car um, or I, you know, I was getting in my car, start my car, you know, maybe the Bluetooth connection t- kicks it off to say, oh, you know, you want to text Brittany that you're on your way home. I mean, those things I think are what's really exciting because it feels like it could take this work. I mean, it's workflow, right? could take these series shortcuts to the next level of just being a little bit more aware of what you're doing, when you do it, how often you do it. And, and the reminding aspect of it is, is what excites me, even though I'm not a heavy <laughs> workflow user, but I, some of the examples they were even showing in the, in the, uh, in the demos, you know, um, like turning on, do not disturb at the movies. Like, yeah. That exactly that I would love that or remembering to turn it off when you leave. I mean, you know, that that would be more important to me. Right. Or, you know, if there was some kind of prompt uh, in watch OS five to turn on the uh, theater mode or is that what, is that mm-hmm. what it's called? I always forget um, calling someone on their birthday. I mean, things like that. I, I, I could see those being really small things, but like high impact things on just, you know, remembering to do something you should do. And uh, like, Calling Philip on his birthday, <laughs> <laughs> which remembering to do things that I should do is honestly a solid, a solid fifth of my, of my iPhone usage is just remembering to do things yeah. that I'm supposed to do. And then I said I was going to do <laughs> and then I was reminded that I need to do. It is. I mean, cause I, 
I can't remember. Oh, I was talking to another guy who's got four kids and, um, and I asked him to do this simple favor for us. And he was like, I can do that for you, but I got to put it, you know, I got to create a reminder. Here. Right. And it's like, I totally, totally understand that because it doesn't matter how simple it is or how, um, I mean, it's amazing just what I can forget in three minutes time, you know? Well, when I realized that you could make reminders location bound, oh, baby. change my life. <laughs> I mean, just this past weekend, getting ready to pack up and go to, uh, Rogers to go to this Jim Gaffigan thing. And, uh, you know, I put a little reminder in, Hey, when I leave my house, <laughs> remind me to get the tickets, which sounds stupid. You know, it sounds like, Hey, you should get them before you leave the house. But it was, a, it was just a fail safe. Right. I didn't want to get to Rogers and not have my printed Absolutely. tickets because the amp is apparently run by 90 year olds, but that's beside the point. Um, one of the things that really stuck out to me about this whole shortcuts business was, um, this add to Siri button. I don't know if you, if you saw some of the demos they did where they were like in other apps, it would, you could get a pop-up of, you know, add this to Siri to, to essentially create the shortcut from there. Um, and then the ability to create your own custom phrase. I don't know. It just seems like we've all been kind of wondering, right? Like what are they doing with workflow? Why, why did they buy it? Um, and this, obviously is the big revelation of, Hey, this is what it is. And it's tied to, it's tied specifically to Siri or, you know, I mean, that's what we're trying to do because, Hey, we're way, behind, <laughs> way behind the game. When you look at things like, you know, Amazon, what they're doing with, with the echoes, this is a way for us to get, you know, closer to parity, but more quickly and more easily. Um, so that add to Siri button, I'm just, you know, again, it, it, it depends on how people implement it, but that excites me because maybe I'm not going to take the time to go to the shortcuts app and like dig into all the recipes. But if I'm, if I'm in an app and they prompt me with, you know, some recipe, essentially, maybe they don't call it that. Um, hey, I'm, I'm more likely to, to get into it that way. And I think about that for a lot of people because, you know, back to the discussions about <laughs> backups and all that stuff. I mean, how many people are really going to even get into the shortcuts app, but maybe a lot of them will end up creating shortcuts just from other apps because of, you know, having this, this prompt, uh, with this, you know, add to Siri button that that might pop up. I wonder, it is interesting. So I was about to say that I wonder how, how much lay people use Siri, but I actually think I know the answer and I think it's like a whole lot. I would say that a lot of lay people probably use it more than I do because I really don't use Siri that much at all on the phone. I, I've I've started using it more now since we have the HomePod. I know that's a whole other discussion we're going to have someday. But um, yeah, I mean, I really don't use Siri on the phone all that often. In fact, I've turned Hey Siri off on my phone because... It, it, you know, it, it does pretty well when I'm at home and, you know, it's battling be- between the HomePod and my phone, but it was just annoying enough that I was like, I'm just going to turn this off. I don't even really use it anyway on my phone. The only time I'm going to use this is when I'm at home, you know, using the HomePod. So I just have turned it off completely. So, the, you know, when I need to use it for something, I have to engage it with the, with the button, with the lock button. But mm-hmm. I'd say you're probably right. Like, probably like, like people I work with. I know they tell me all the time they'll be, you know, they need to send a message. And so they'll just tell Siri to send this message for them. <laughs> I never is, do that. I never use that. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I do. I do a fair amount of that. And I guess I, I probably use Siri maybe the most in the car at this point, actually with CarPlay, with CarPlay. Um, I mean, just sending messages and having to read me messages and asking it to play songs and hopefully soon asking it to play podcasts would be awesome. I really do. I really do wonder that those shortcuts and especially this add to Siri part of shortcuts. I just wonder how, how much like what Marco was, was hoping for before WDC, easy for me to say, how much like just a, a noun verb object a developer could create that to be 
how much Marco in that instance could just have a button that says, add this whole host of shortcuts for yeah. everything that I'm subscribed to, add that to Siri so that whatever podcast I think of that I'm already subscribed to, I can just say, you know, play the latest upgrade podcast, play the latest ATP podcast, play the latest Freakonomics podcast. And if I'm already subscribed to it, I mean, I can, I can, I can understand that I'm going to have to already be subscribed to it because otherwise the, you know, the possibilities are endless. There's a missing link somewhere. Yeah. So, um, but I mean, if it can be that, gosh, that'd be great. I mean, it just be right? so, it would just be so, yeah. so good. Um, and then that also creates the possibility for, uh, for, for Spotify. Now you're a little bit dicey with Spotify because Spotify, you know, and streaming music is all the music ever available anywhere to a great extent. And so you do have kind of a limited, and, and I was reading on Mac rumors earlier. Um, and I don't know where the report was from exactly, but it was basically that it looks like Spotify is probably going to be, you're going to be able to play podcasts maybe with Siri or playlist, I should say with Siri. Yeah. Maybe you could, maybe like your saved artists. I don't know. Oh, they were, I mean, yeah. They were talking about this on connected. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I haven't listened to, haven't listened to oh. live connected yet, but that, that's, I thought that's where you're pulling it from. That's yeah. Fine. No. Yeah. Um, because, because I really, the only thing I like Apple music for is wow. playing hey. songs with Siri. <laughs> it's the only the thing. The only I like. thing. <laughs> The only, I think it's the only thing because get a home pod. You'll, it, there, there'll be more things then they're playing. Nah. But if I had a home pod, I would prefer to use Spotify with it. If it, if, if Siri could be as full ranging to it as to Apple music, mm. um, philosophical differences. Come I mean, in. I think that every, every music service I've used and I've used, I mean, I've used Amazon, I've used Spotify, I've used Google play, um, I've, I'm using Pandora premium right now. Cause I get that free for a few months to this group on thing. All of them are better than Apple music when it comes to, I want to hear music that sounds like the music I'm listening to. Um, and I like, I do that a lot where I just, I'll think of a few songs that I want to hear heard those few songs now i'm just like to hear more it's kind of like this and apple music is just really bad about playing me a lot of the same stuff a lot of the times um and it's also uh, it's just it's just not great um all the others seem to be way better so i would love to i i just at this point i mean especially in the car um i just almost require the ability to call out a song and have it start playing or call out an artist and you know have it start playing. So if Apple music's the only one that can do that as it is now, like, um, and I mean, it costs me $5 a month with the students. So that's a more of a no brainer to get that as well as another, um, service to use with the echo or, or whatnot. I feel like shortcuts is going to be a huge deal though. And maybe we won't realize it until, you know, a, a few releases on down from here, but I don't know. I just, I think they really have the potential. If the developers that were there doing their thing, you know, if they find unique ways to implement it in, into their apps and, and not necessarily have to force people to go to the shortcut app to create these recipes themselves. That being said, I do think that the best parts of iOS are and have always been, when developers are called upon to make a feature great, then as many, as many good developers and great developers as there are that work on iOS apps, they always come up with great ideas. And then a lot of times, you know, somebody comes out with like kind of the ultimate idea and everybody just kind of copies off them (laughs) to a large extent too. But, um, but anytime where there's really just a lot of possibility given, to developers they're they're always always good to go um you know and usually they don't get to do that because they're hamstrung in some sort of way i do just feel like with siri i just wonder how much because they didn't really mention much improvement to actual siri 
Oh yeah. yeah. And Siri is just <laughs> such an oddball. I mean, the stuff that it gets and does not get. Well, and, and I think that's key too to what they showed here of, Hey, you can create your own phrases to launch these, these different recipes or these different, you know, workflows you're trying mm-hmm. to kick off. I think that's huge because of what you're about to say, <laughs> Siri is kind of dumb <laughs> and so, it has a so hard dumb. time understanding what you're asking it. Um, well, the problem though is that you say that and it, it uh, seems like when you say that, then it's like, well, it doesn't understand the words. It understands words pretty well a lot of times, yeah. but then it just will go like off the deep end as far as what it retrieves for you. And especially compared to Alexa and, and Google assistant. Hello, Alexa. <laughs> it, it, it really is, is it just, when you work, when you use Amazon's assistant and, and Google assistant, they'll just tell you stuff. Like they'll tell oh, you yeah. just whatever you ask it. And so last night I'm watching game three of the NBA finals and Apple had an ad when they were coming back from commercial break where they had some guys say, Hey, you know, don't want to, don't want to forget to watch game four, you know, just say, Hey Siri, you know, remind me to watch game four on ABC <laughs> and like showed it, you know, like appearing for Siri and doing all that. And I'm like, okay let's do this right so i tell i just say hey siri remind me to watch game four on abc and of course it's got four for yeah and so it just creates a (laughs) reminder to watch game four on abc with no date no location you know (laughs) it's just gonna sit there and reminders and and b tried it again nothing you know tried it on the eight tried it on the se and it's just like so you're telling me I I just can't have any faith when they mention something that should, that Siri should be able to do. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea. If they, if it can, if it can be clued into that, that sounds great. Right. But you're, it's almost like a self-defeating to say when this, isn't this a great thing that a voice assistant can do? Not that ours can do it, but wouldn't it be great if a voice assistant could do that? If you get to pick the custom phrase, to launch right, these but stuff, stuff like that, stuff like that, where it's just like dynamic knowledge in the world, custom phrases can't get you anywhere with that. And, and that's what, I, that's what I, I think the other assistants are so good at. Um, and series just so bad at, and I just don't know that it's going to get better. I'd love, I'd love, I'd love for it to get better, but it just doesn't seem like it's going to. <laughs> Their tagline for shortcuts was millions of apps. Yeah. Incredible possibilities. Speaking of incredible possibilities, let's talk about news, stocks, and books. <laughs> okay, no, I, I'm not going to talk about these long, but... Um, Apple books. I I could probably count on one hand the times I've used the Stocks app. Now, I know there's probably adults out there that actually use it, that care about that, but I just... When they started talking about this, my thought was... What does this say about how low key this keynote is, this year's WWDC is, that we're talking about the Stocks app during it? I mean, go on. Well, I mean, it's the first update to the Stocks app since 2007, since the Stocks app was released <laughs> with the original iPhone. I think it is, I mean, it's interesting the reason why stocks, especially, but news and and books as well, stocks most of all, are updated. And it's because they created an iPad app. And I, th- I think it's easy to say that in creating the iPad app, which they created so that they, they could create a Mac app. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And creating this larger app, they rethought things that they hadn't thought about in mm-hmm. 10 years. You yeah. Know? It was interesting. And it looks a lot like the stocks app, which I use every now and then. Um, I mean, I've seen... A, seen it be used i don't i don't have it on a device yet but it looks a lot better yeah um and well, the way what, that they're, that's worth they're the way that they're integrating news into Absolutely. the stocks app 
It, like I could see that being useful. And the news in this current stocks app is terrible because it is really, really small. It, I mean, you can like, it usually doesn't even fit the whole headline. So you really have to tap it to, and I mean, it's from weird sources. I mean, all these different weird sources. So I, I think it'll be, a lot, I think it'll be really nice for, also, for those that use it. Also like how they're adding this new sidebar to the news app on the iPad. Looks really good. I'm excited about that because mm-hmm. I found that's really the only time I I even use the news app is when I'm on my iPad. I I use it a lot. It's just so much easier to navigate and like find articles you care about. And you just can see so much more obviously (laughs) than you can uh, on your phone books. The only thing I want to say about books is it's books. It's now Apple books. Are there any other apps now? Apple, you know, native uh, first party apps that still have the eye. I mean, besides iTunes, I guess the iTunes store, right? iTunes. It's, it's, uh, I don't think so. They just went so hot and heavy with that eye for so long. <laughs> and now sure, it's, just, sure. it's just going away, going goodbye. CarPlay, big news for you. Absolutely. Third party navigation. It's going to be, like, I'm really, really interested to see how Google Maps and, and Waze turn out on, on CarPlay because there are just some, clear like just to have them on the screen will be awesome because like right now i have a a event mount that i put my phone in right next to my carplay screen (laughs) and that's uh, just how apple envisioned it right just how (laughs) apple envisioned it uh just the way that marco uses it too you know um except marco doesn't have carplay he's got the he has his but I mean, even worse, he's got his <laughs> phone next to a 15 inch screen, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? That to in run, the Tesla, uh, in the Tesla that to run, um, to run ways, um, or Google maps, which are both just better almost, almost all the time than Apple maps. Um, because it's, it's just when you, when you need navigation, when you need to know where the cops are, you want to, you got to know. Yes. And Waze is great for this. Um, so I'll, I'll be really interested to see how, how they, how they turn out. Um, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be really nice because I've, I've had limited interaction with CarPlay. Really. The only time was riding to Branson and riding back from Branson with one Wes Hinesley. Uh, I guess he got a newer, newer car and, um, it had CarPlay and his Chevy Cruze, and he—I don't even think had had even used it yet. <laughs> so I was showing him how to use it, and not showing myself because I didn't know. Um, but yeah, it was—it's if you're you know if you're a heavy iOS user, CarPlay is great. I mean, it's it's nice, and it's only it sounds like it's only going to get better if they keep bringing in some third party stuff to expand your options. Um, they, they finished that discussion with their app updates. They used the term, I don't know who it was on, on stage at the time said app dates. That's the word I never want to hear anyone say again. Um, do not disturb. Uh, I, I, I don't have a lot here, but do not disturb during bedtime. Seemed like a, I could, I could get some benefit out of that because I have this problem (laughs) Well, I don't think it's a problem, but let me get there. Um, I I have a really hard time going to sleep when I get in my bed. Uh, I'm sleepy, but I'm not tired. Or do I have that backwards? I'm tired. My body's tired, but I'm not sleepy. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm not ready to, to go to sleep. My, my mind isn't ready. Uh, my wife says it's because I stare at a screen. Uh, usually a laptop all the way up until it's time to go to sleep. And she said, that's a problem. You, you use night shift. Um, yeah, I, I do. I do on the MacBook. I don't on the iPad pro. I don't want to get into it. Okay. Um, it doesn't have true tone. And I just feel like that makes a difference to me. But anyway, I don't want, I don't want to talk about it. Um, which I guess the MacBook doesn't have true tone either, but, this is, you know, whatever. Um, she says this is a problem. I say it's really just a symptom of other problems, but you know, workaholic, whatever. All this to say, there are times when I'm just laying there 
and I reach over for my phone and I could benefit from not having all those notifications during, during bedtime. So I'm, and the, they show the, the wake up screen. Like it's very simple when you get up. So even when you first get up, they're still kind of, they use the word easing you into your, your notifications. I like that. I I feel like that actually is more helpful to me than some of the stuff we're about to get into with, with notifications. But, um, and, and they added a thing where you can 3d touch into do not disturb from control center and you have more options for like quickly turning on do not disturb for like an hour or however, basically slack. It's basically, there's definitely some similarities there. And yeah. I mean, I think all those options are really nice. I think there's, there's different, um, time options. There's also, you know, until the end of my current event, mm. um, option, That's there's, helpful. there's when I, until I leave my current location option, there's the bedtime option. So, I mean, I think the more of that, that there is the, the better just because different people lead different lives and, You'd love Do Not Disturb to be able to fit what they need it to do. I do just feel like I would love, and hopefully this is something for next year, I would just love more fine grain control over what can be allowed through with with Do Not Disturb on. Because if you're going to have it, if you're going to have Do Not Disturb on every night, that's all well and good, but you're certainly going to want to you know, allow a phone call from your, you know, parent to come in, yeah. you know, for, for whatever reason. Um, or I mean, if you're like, like me, if you're, you know, working with people who aren't on call and sometimes get called in the middle of the night and need help, then, you know, you're not going to, you want everything well, else. If your watch isn't on, I mean, forget about it. <laughs> but you want, you, you want everything else to, uh, to be, you know, whisked away, but there are certain things. And, and to this point, I, I mean, not that I know of that they've, they've improved on this at all, but you just have to put it all in VIPs or favorites or, or you know, one of those and, and messages really, there's no separate messages thing. It's just calls and repeated calls that you mm-hmm. can allow in. So I, I'd love more, more fine grain there so that, so that people can feel really confident in having do not disturb on that. They're not going to, miss something um you know, catastrophic in a, in a lot of ways just just because they have that on you know what frustrates frustrates me about do not disturb is that like if i'm watching a game and i'm streaming because i don't have cable um i ha- i feel like i need to turn do not disturb on sometimes because i have i'll have notifications set for specific teams right that i'm following but if i'm actually watching the game then i don't want to get those notifications because it's kind of spoilerish right absolutely um i'm thinking more so during the nfl not not as much with basketball but um but if i'm if i'm on my phone i'm still getting those notifications while i'm unlocked have they done anything to address that cuz that really bothers me every fall so you're, I have do not disturb turned on just cause I don't want to get the notifications, you know, but you don't, if even, I'm not on my phone, see the notification. I don't want to see them at all. Like, yeah, you basically have, you just have to turn them off. Yeah. I know, but it, I don't want to do that for the ESPN app. Cause then I'll forget, I'll forget to go back and turn it back on. This right. is my dilemma. I just, I mean, the way like I don't have any sports notifications on because I, I watch very little live uh, I like to watch it delayed because then I skip commercials and do the whole bit. Um, see, I'm the opposite. I only ever will see you, it live. You, you can only yeah. ever watch it live, <laughs> right. which is what I pay a good amount to, to avoid. Yeah. Um, and it, it continues to be worth it for me. But I, I, that, that is, um, that is a problem that nobody really cares to solve. It seems, well, that's unacceptable. But it really seems like a problem to me because, a sports, I mean, a sports game spoiled is, I don't know, it's really, yeah. really troublesome. It's not good. It's, it's not, not good, good at all. all. Yeah. All right. Notifications, instant tuning, um, easy access to managing notifications by app, group notifications, uh, not just by app, but also by topic. Um, so they're trying to give you a lot more flexibility with, um, it, it, instead of be, being an all or nothing thing, or you having to even go in. Like we're just talking about with the ESPN stuff, right? Like I would have to go in and just completely turn off 
notifications for that specific app. Uh, they're giving you really easy access to get to those settings or to kind of turn the dial a little bit on how frequently you get them. So all of this kind of leading into the next thing, which is screen time and trying to, trying to, it's just such a weird thing to me how they're like, obviously they want you to buy phones and use their phones. Right. But also still having to be aware of, Hey, all of this is kind of our fault because, you know, we released the, the, the greatest smartphone of all time. And it, you know, we've only made it better over the last 11 years, 10 years, however long it's been. Um, but they're in this kind of weird spot where they're getting pressure from, people who are addicted to their phones. Well, probably not from them, probably from their family members, but it's just, it just feels weird to me. Right? Like it's good. I I understand why. And I understand it's good to have these features and things like this, but I don't know, man, it just feels, it feels like a paradox to me. (laughs) There's an element of that. Um, it almost, it almost reminds me of, uh, like Coca-Cola, and how much Coca-Cola has more recently been talking about the other drinks that they serve and, and really been like going whole hog on Coke Zero. And it's like, listen, like you want sugar, like get another sweetener. You know, <laughs> that's probably not any better for you, but, you know, you can at least believe it is. Um, and yeah, I mean, at the, the, but I really, really do. I mean, this f- feature and the graphs it gives you and the abilities that it gives you, I- I'm really excited about it just because, I mean, A, like I love metrics. Um, I mean, I love just kind of knowing, you know, what's what and, and being able to make adjustments from there. Talking and, about just weekly activity summary. Yes. I mean, that sort of thing I'm and, and daily stuff. You know, I I am and I'm, and I'm not. I'm horrified um, more for Brittany than for me. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to turn it off. But at the same time, so maybe she will turn it off. But to me, the great part about that is that for anyone who feels that way about someone else, the right way to handle that is not to approach them at all, right? But maybe the device approaching them, you know, this this non-person saying, just wanted you to know, you know, this is your 13th hour in the last three days yeah. on, you know, this social media app or all social media apps combined or, um, because if I tell her girl, wash your face, <laughs> right. it's going to not, not come off as well. well as if, as if the phone just encourage her, Absolutely. encourages her to, to go wash her face. Absolutely. It's like, it's like when I set Alexa timers for my children, then when the 10 minute timer is up and thanks Alexa, <laughs> when the 10 minute timer is up and you got to put the iPad up, then like, like Alexa said, you got to put the iPad up. Like, what are you looking at me for? You know, it's just yeah. well, the timer went off, you know? So, I mean, I think that there's an element to that. And, and for, for me, I, I, th- I think it's, it's great because I can definitely get in, just a day, I mean, a day where I'm not feeling great, especially where like, I'll just be on Twitter, just, I'll just be reading the same tweets and like in that same spot and being like, there's no more. Like, um, and just, just to get like a nudge of like, Hey, you've hit your, you've hit your hour or whatever, you know, of Twitter and like, you can immediately hit a button, go right back to it. But just to, just to have that, that awareness, um, I think will be great. And I see it being more helpful for, or more helpful or uh, more detrimental to our children, <laughs> than, Absolutely. you know, Great than ourselves. That. Like we're, we're going to, we're going to use this more for our kids than we are probably for ourselves, Definitely. at least at the, at the outset. I had this really skeptical thought though. And tell me if I'm a horrible person for thinking this, but is this really, is this just going to be the new do not disturb while driving? Like it's a feature that will turn on and then probably quickly turn off at some point. Well, do not the, one of the problems with do not disturb while driving is that it's really rudimentary and it's just like you're in your car, like you can't use your phone in your car. It's like, well, I could be like being in my car is is 
one of many states of the car doing something or me needing to right. meaning control the car. Um, I could just be the passenger. Right. In which, my car. Which you can obviously say. Yeah. And then you can say, even if you're the driver, that you're the passenger. <laughs> and, uh, but I mean, like you gotta say that if you're like a stoplight for what you know is going to be, you know, 90 seconds. It's mm-hmm. like, no, like I could, I could look at a message. I could send a message. I got enough so you time to do you that. You don't think I'm a monster for having this. No, that's a good thought. But thought. So I just wonder how, how much, uh, I mean, it'll be interesting to see if, if this just is the way it is for years to come and there's not improvements made to it, there's definitely going to be a lot of cracks to fall into. Um, but I, I do think it's a, it's a simpler, it's a simpler problem to solve. And in, in some cases, I mean, like for our children, and I, mean, I look forward to this very much. I mean, like, like YouTube has a, has a timer, um, within it. But one of the things about the YouTube timer is that you have to, once the timer's gone off, like you have to reset it. And like a parent has to intervene before YouTube can ever be used again. Like one of the great things. <laughs> that sounds dramatic. <laughs> before it can ever be used again. That's, well, what I mean to say is like, if it's the next day and clearly I set an hour timer for you the day before, well, now, obviously, I'm I'm fine with you using it for another hour. I mean, one of the great things about it's like a dead man switch. <laughs> right. About, <laughs> what the hell? One of the great things about screen time is that it's this daily thing and resets and I don't have yeah. to do anything so, you, so that you can go. And one of the things that I would love for my children to figure out to do, which they're never going to never going to do like I would want them to do, because anytime I give Briar the option of listen, like you you have 30 minutes to use for the rest of the afternoon. Like you don't have to use it right now. I use it right now. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's get this out of the way. So I don't have to worry about one of money. It's like, no, but like you could like go outside right now and then you could come in and play iPad for a little while and then you can go back outside and be like, but I can use the iPad now. Is that what you're saying? Like, <laughs> now I can choose to use the iPad. <laughs> yes. But when you're 30 minutes is up, then it's up. Well, I'm doing it. 30 minutes. Here we come right now. And so I'd, I'd love for them to budget their, their time. Um, and I think feel like I feel like this gives them a, a chance at more, more of an opportunity to, to do that, it, yeah. and especially as the, as they get older, because um, obviously, obviously, when we have children that use only iPads in our homes, they're not doing anything outside of our homes with iOS devices. But soon enough, they will. And I think, I mean, this is even just all the more powerful at that point. Right. And, and to me at that point, like the kid is really going to have the opportunity to go, no, like I know that tonight I'm doing that thing with friends and I'm going to want to be able to use whatever the social media network that exists in that doesn't even exist yet um, is going to be that they know they're going to want to use at that point. And it's like, well then don't just <laughs> sink two hours into it right, right. now because you want to use it because you know, I mean, that's, that's what we want them to do. And now we can kind of give them quite a bit of a nudge to, to actually do that, which I, I think is a good thing. I was being a little skeptical about do not disturb while driving, but for the times where it, it is effective, even if it's not <laughs> as often as they intend it to be for those times where it is effective, I, I kind of see the same benefit to something like this. Obviously you can just turn it off. You know, if, if it's yourself, you know, you, you get the prompt, you can just say, ignore it. Right. Um, but maybe a few times you, d- you, you just, you do decide, Hey, okay. Yeah. I, I've had enough today. And so I think even if it is just small percentages, it's possible improvement. Right. For well, all of us. For, for what it's worth, like, I mean, this is just personal to me, but this is probably not totally out of left field for many people, but like, I would actually like to see, cause there's obviously the flip side of using an app way too much. Like I'd also like to see like my, you know, Bible usage, mm-hmm. um, you know, app, app, app usage. Um, and, and that sort of thing to see, you know, and, and to see that, like, look, there's kind of like a, an inverse correlation between Twitter and Bible usage. <laughs> like you can kind of steal a little from one to right. add to another. You can um, rob Peter to pay Paul. Right. I don't, I don't think that fits here, but, but I know what you're saying. It's a joke. I know. <laughs> the other skeptical thought I had, though, was that this is all used through family sharing. So it's just another way, another way for them to 
try and get get that services money out of I you. Did, I did have that thought. Well, there's more services money to be had there. Well, but I mean, getting you into family sharing just gets you one step closer to that paying that dollar a month or that three dollars a month for the the more. That that's what I mean but, when but, I'm a little skeptical there. But but family sharing actually gives you the ability to just pay three dollars and have two hundred gigabytes for everybody in your family yeah. rather than yeah, I know. paying on multiple accounts. But um, three dollars they want, of course, of course. But it's going to be three dollars instead of nine dollars because you don't have three accounts anymore. You just have yeah, one yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. to mm-hmm. filter up to. But I, I I did have this thought that like with my children using my account, like one thing that I won't get unless I go set up the family sharing, which I don't really think I'll do for a number of reasons, um, is that I won't be able to see their usage on my device and that sort of thing. I I don't think, um, I mean, I would love for there to be a feature and maybe this is possible, but at the same time, I don't think it's going to be, um, for like me to look at, for me to look on my iPad at my iPhone usage and my kids iPad usage. And, um, I guess, Blair uses my Apple ID so I can I could look at her usage as well. You um, spy you. But uh I, I don't think that's gonna be a thing. Just so doesn't... she won't ever know how awful she's being. <laughs> Brittany will, because she has her own Apple ID for that. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I mean, it's gonna be per device. I'm nah. just saying that with family sharing, with family sharing, they said that, you know, parent Apple IDs can view the child Apple IDs usage where so you're gonna say I don't think I'll be there as one of your children. Is that what you're saying? Well, if I set up family sharing, then I don't know how all that works. How many, how many parents can you have in a family? Eh, it's debatable. Oh boy. All right. Messages. Breakthrough technology we call tongue detection. <laughs> New emojis. They've added a ghost, koala, tiger, and a T-Rex, but so much more than just those four, because now we have me emoji. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And emoji demos are really awkward. Uh, that's, kinda, that's kinda all creepy. I felt when I was, cause I'm watching this, this very nice lady. Technically very impressive. Yeah. But watching someone do it on stage oh. and they're the faces they're making. Oh. <laughs> it's like, yes. this is a little uncomfortable and for me right now. What that means is like, if you want it to look like that on screen, you have to make those faces. <laughs> right. Do you ever use an emoji? Um, no, not really. I, 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 I couldn't even tell you the last time I used it. The first week I got the 10. Yeah, I did. But it was very brief. Do you ever use FaceTime? No. Really? Okay. I mean, uh, I do. Yes. But it's, it's very limited. Your mom audience. has an Android. Yes. Um, yeah. 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 We're about to get into that. Yeah. Yeah. 90, 90% of our FaceTime usage is with Blair's mom, who has a 10 actually. Yeah. So. The only time I use FaceTime is when Kanan calls me and I'm at work and he has some really important question, of course, <laughs> which happens about every day, <laughs> which I enjoy because, you know, um, it's nice that he still wants to call me. Absolutely. Um, so Memoji, I could see doing that. that would, I mean, I'll, I'll use it when it when it comes out. But is it just going to be another flash in the pan like? And emoji was at the beginning. I don't know. I, the, I think the bigger thing that they're doing here is with these fun, what they're calling fun effects. So basically turning messages um, and, and FaceTime as well. And we're, you know, we're going to get into that, but basically turning these things into Instagram stories. I mean, like that's really what it is, right? Being able to do filters and shapes and texts and stickers and all this stuff. Um, it just looked like, Instagram stories to me, which I have yet to create an Instagram story. I do consume them. Um, but yeah, I, don't, I just don't know how much I'll dig into these features because I don't already with Instagram. Um, but yeah, Memoji. I don't know. I did like that you can pull them into um, into the messages camera, like uh, the that you can pull your Memoji into that as well when you're taking a picture or whatever. So, um, and then that leads right into FaceTime. So yeah, I mean, my, my FaceTime usage is, is not that great. Um, because of like what you said, my mom doesn't have an Apple device. So I really have no one that I would FaceTime with other than my children who are at home on an iPad. Uh, but 32 users group FaceTime. That's, uh, I just can't imagine. I just can't imagine uh, having 32 people who are 
um, have some kind of uh, related need, you know, to be on a call together that would all also have Apple devices. I, I just don't know who that would really affect. Well, I think that almost is the point to be made, though, is that because I, I think the the great usage of that 32 is that you can go from a group iMessage or group text, really, of any number of people looking to meet at this place and go out and have fun. People that don't have kids apparently do this sort of thing. And high schoolers do this sort of thing and college students do this sort of thing. And they're, they're a large market for these devices um, and large users of, this, of these sort of things. So, I mean, I think, you know, obviously you got a group chat of 12 people just hit a button and now we're in a FaceTime. Like that's nice. And if you're the two people out of those 12 that don't have an iPhone and now you don't get to be part of the group FaceTime, like that's a serious, that's a serious incentive to get an iPhone. And that's true. Apple's Apple's for creating incentives to get an iPhone. That's kind of their job to a certain extent. So, um, I, I, I think it's a, I think it's a good thing. And I, I could see like when I was, when I was in high school, actually, um, I used to have a, I mean, I had a paper sheet of like 40 numbers of whenever we would decide that we were going to be doing something tonight, you know, watching this movie or going out, you know, getting ice cream here, whatever it was going to be. Um, like I would just, I would just start calling these 40 people one after the other, 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 after the other. That's gross. And, uh, I mean, there wasn't really like text, text messaging wasn't really big yet. I mean, everybody was like paying 15 cents a message or whatever it was at that point. Um, and so like this would be really nice to a, just get a whole bunch of people on the call together on the FaceTime together and say, Hey, what do, what do we want to do? You know? Um, and then be able to just, just do it that way. I, I think it, I think it'd be really nice. My thought was, Hey, small companies, this could be a really nice thing now, you know, but again, everybody has to have an iOS device. It doesn't mm-hmm. have to be a phone necessarily, mm-hmm. but, um, I was thinking about, or, know, or Mac. <clears throat> yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Um, the work I do with like 501, uh, all three of us have iPhones. So, you know, if we were, it's very hard for me to go there to the office very often because, I, oh yeah, I have another full time job. Um, but you know, maybe we could do like a weekly meeting and we could do a uh, group FaceTime and, and, you know, do it that way. So uh, that, that was a thought I had about, well, maybe there is a, a use for that. All right. That's all for iOS 12, man. Any other closing thoughts on this release as a whole? They, they start with performance, but then they, they announce a lot of features that, you know, you, they kind of made you think, oh, this is going to be boring. And then it was like, whoa, wait, there's actually a lot of, a lot of neat things you guys are doing in here. Yeah, but they did I, I talk about the stocks app, so I still feel like that's very telling. I don't know how many of those features are going to be used very often. I mean, they're they're fine to have, but I mean, I'm not going to I'm probably going to be on a few FaceTime calls of multiple people <clears throat> during the course of, of the first year of iOS 12. I mean, that's not going to be a frequent occurrence. Um, and, and, and those sort of things, I I think the screen time will probably be most useful for me. I mean, that's probably going to be, be the most used uh, new thing that's come out and, and really just the performance. I mean, especially they talked about the, the share sheet, um, coming up like twice as fast as it used to. And that's one thing that I notice a whole lot on the, on the SE, but you're not going to notice it when you have your SE too. That'd be wonderful. But um, I mean, that's one thing that I really do notice is the share sheet. Like you'll hit that share button and then you get the share sheet. <laughs> and so, I mean, that, that would be, those sort of things are huge to me. And you mean, your common, your common actions, obviously the keyboard coming up, going to the camera. I can't remember the other one that they mentioned in that percentage, percentage, percentage slide of theirs, but I, I think that that's huge to me. Um, I've also, I've also heard um, from, from people on Twitter that are, that have been using the, the newest beta that a it's pretty darn rock solid. Um, like Ryan Jones, Ryan Jones was saying that it's, it really feels like an 11.5 
Um, Which to a certain extent, it is. Yeah, makes I guess. sense because if they focused on performance and maybe therefore bug fixes, then it would make sense that this is not like other betas. That battery life is not taking the hit that it usually does, and you're not you're not falling into all these um, weird, you know, shutdowns and reboots and sort of things that happen a lot of times with that, that first beta, especially. Um, so, I mean, I think that's, that's really promising, but if bugs are fixed and things are more rock solid and performing a lot better to me, like that is actually the most important and most used feature of this, of this version of iOS. I mean, if things are just quicker, Oh, I remember what it was. He said that the animations seem to have been accelerated. So, I mean, zooming in and out of applications and into a folder and out of a folder and going back to the springboard and those sort of things seem to be just that much quicker. You're you're not waiting on the, the visual stuff to finish up anymore. They've really just sped that up. It's the same animation, but it's happening twice as fast, um, which I think would be, be huge because I do feel like I'm, I'm waiting on animations sometimes and that's really that's really frustrating all right let's talk about watch os 5 the most depressing part of the keynote for me you would think it's tvos but we'll get into why I, i'm a little depressed about watch os 5 but um not anything really huge in here they did spend a lot of time talking about workouts and just activity that that area um they did mention that they had done this study and I think that they said this, we believe this is the largest biometric data test of its kind, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, but automatic workout detection. I like that. What I like even more is suggesting that you end your workout when it seems like you're not working out anymore. Cause both of these are excellent because I never forget to start a workout, but I always forget to end it. <laughs> so yeah, um, same way. Having that will be uh, will be helpful. F- um, well, I say it'll be helpful for me. It's not going to be helpful for me because guess what? This thing does not work on the uh, Watch Series Zero. <laughs> You're burying the lead, though, because podcasts on the watch, to me, is a, a great feature that's coming. I mean, the Apple Podcast app, which is all fine and good, but the fact that because of that, they're enabling, you know, background audio and all, yeah. all the, all that's needed for, for overcast to be a legitimate, you know, watch app. That's you still use, just overcast? use on the watch. Of course. What if I told you I don't use it anymore? Then I'd be shocked. Yeah. You, yeah I'm just, I'm have just you joking. been getting a lot of, uh, failed streams, stream failed in overcast? Not more than, uh, not more than normal. Like, really? I got I got uh, one yesterday, and um, well, I download, so I don't. I'm not streaming, but mm. um, sometimes I'll get the failed download. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I noticed I got one yesterday, and the reason I noticed is because it'd been a while since I'd had any. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I download. I, I don't think I'd ever seen one before a month ago or so. I'm thinking a whole bunch of them recently, but I'm I'm confident that'll. I'll take care of so myself. we know what Marco is going to be working on. Absolutely. <laughs> this summer. And I, I, I think that'd be great. I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful for that because I'd, I'd love to listen to a podcast and run just, yeah. just with my watch, just with the podcast downloaded to it. Right. I, Cause you're, you're, that'd a, be awesome. you're a series one user. So that means yes. obviously you don't have the cellular, but you, you still have the ability to sync you, you know, in theory, you can do this with Apple music, right? So we're assuming we'll be able to do this with, and maybe they did flat out say this with the podcast app that you'd be able to, to sync, um, podcasts to your watch directly. So that like you're saying, you could, you know, you could walk away without your phone. I do wonder if, if it's going to be any easier to download (laughs) podcasts because I know that currently, the watch just for whatever reason just doesn't want to use Wi-Fi. It just wants to use Bluetooth, which is just dog slow and really, yeah. really pragmatic, uh, really, really, uh, impractical, impractical, um, and easy, you know, very quick to fail and just obviously not tell you about it. But I really 
hope that the hope that the watch and, and the OS is what would do this. I really want the watch to rely more on Wi-Fi because there's all sorts of times where it just wants to route through my phone and it just takes forever to try to do so. And it just feels like, why don't you just do this over Wi-Fi? I just don't really understand, especially, especially in the case of Siri. I guess Siri really is actually not on the watch. I mean, is, is that is that true? Do I, do I have that right? Listen, you're talking to the wrong guy for that one. Because I'm a, it, not only am I not a heavy Siri user, but I am still uh, rocking a, a Siri Zero. Absolutely. So I, it's definitely not on the Siri Zero, I would say, because... It's a nightmare right. trying to talk so, to Siri on your Siri Zero. I guess Zero. it's got to be on the Series 3 cellular that when you're on cellular, you can use Siri. So then it's obviously on the watch. Mm. Okay, yeah, but I get what you're saying. Certainly yeah. with the Series 1, and I don't know about like the Series 3 GPS, I think is what they call it, the non-cellular version, if that one will, based on being on Wi-Fi, and speaking of being on Wi-Fi, it is interesting that you can choose a Wi-Fi network on the Apple watch now to me, that is promising to some degree to maybe the fact that it's actually going to rely on Wi-Fi to a greater degree. Um, yeah, because if it's automatically syncing podcasts, you know, it, it's obviously going to be happening in the background, but when you would much rather it be doing that over Wi-Fi than using your phone and definitely, over, yeah. definitely, <laughs> So I, I wonder, I wonder if it will, I, I really, I really hope that the watch watch is going to rely more on Wi-Fi. I think that would be huge for the watch. Now, granted the, the series three is, I mean, from what all I can tell from what I've seen of it, it's really quick, um, even just off cellular, but I mean, it's got a much quicker processor. It seems to communicate with the, with the phone a lot better. Um, and I mean, for what it's worth, so I mean, I I think that you, whether you think you will, but I think you think you will too. <laughs> I think that you'll be going series four in the fall. Oh, am I supposed to respond to that? You can respond if you want to. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I didn't feel any push with the series three uh, just because. Eh, I have Slack messages. In well, the I know. It, it's, a, it's a speed issue. It, it's not a functionality issue like i'm not i'm not missing out on any functionality that i didn't already have now the speed is making it seem like i am at times right in terms of what i use the watch for there was nothing with series three that added new features that i wasn't able to get because i could still get watch os 4 true um now there were a few things like obviously the the heart you know more accurate heart rate monitoring and all that stuff, um, but I mean obviously like I can't, I can't use Watch OS five at all, um, so I mean this is kind of the line in the sand of hey bud it's it, it might be time to and battery life has just been crazy I mean like right now. I'm at 21%, but that's, uh, this is a really good day actually for me considering how late it is. Don't j- just don't, don't tell me. I'm at 35%. Oh, okay. Okay. Not too bad then. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, if I can, if I can swing it, then yeah, I, I'll probably try that. Maybe that'll be my Christmas and my birthday. I broke the news to Blair that her series zero is not going to. I told Brittany and she didn't care. Like really? she doesn't care at all. I, well, I quickly assuaged any fears that Blair had. That, don't worry. I think there's a series one in your future. No? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, don't you worry about a thing. And that's the thing is as much frustration as I have with my series zero, it's magnified even more for Brittany because she's got the, you know, 38 millimeter. Oh my. So her battery life is <laughs> it's just it's never been good. Yeah. It's never been good. But I mean, if, she doesn't, she doesn't care. I mean, for what she uses it for, it still is effective. Um, but you know, if I'm going to be, you know, getting myself a watch, I should probably, probably bring her along for the ride as well. It's not, uh, I don't know, probably be smart to do that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, one of the questions I kept asking myself with like all these features, um, you know, we didn't talk about walkie talkie, uh, raise your wrist to talk to Siri. So you're not even going to have to, 
you know, do any of the Hey Siri nonsense anymore. That's going to be really interesting. Yeah, that's going to take some getting used to. Um, But part of this made me wonder, like, was there anything in these new features that that you feel like kind of signals what's to come in series four, because there's some rumors about, you know, maybe it'll be, it'll look different. You know, maybe it'll be a different uh, form factor in in some way. Um, I just kind of, I just kind of wonder like the software always kind of tips us off to what the hardware is going to look like. Um, But with this stuff, I didn't really feel like there was anything here that made me think other than just the, the standard stuff, faster processors, more battery life, you know, they're going to have to do that stuff anyway if they want to keep pushing the cellular option. And so I'm just like, I don't know. Did, did anything really tell me that we could get a, a significantly redesigned series four watch? So the, the raise to talk to Siri, I just wonder if that indicates an always on screen in some way. I don't know. I hope it does. <laughs> I, I hope it does. Well, uh, just all these things like uh, the automatic workout detection. Um, it, you know, that doesn't sound like a huge thing, but for it to know, like it's got to be engaging those sensors more frequently, right? Like picking up on those things, like all of those things tell me that, you know, we're probably going to get increases to battery and cause you, you kind of have to have those things to keep doing more of those That's things. True. And I think the, the Siri, the Siri but stuff plays into that too. Doesn't seem to point towards a slimmer. Yeah. Right. Watch, which I, for a moment, I think I would appreciate, but I always, I also, well, that's why I've been keeping my series zero because you know, the series three is like 0. 0.02 millimeters wider. It's just unacceptable for me. Right. I do. I mean, I would love an, I would love an always on display. I think more than a thinner watch. I mean, I think I've had to choose. I just, there are just still frequent times when I just have to like try two oh, times yeah. for it to come on. It's like every time I raise my, my it just wrist doesn't at this point seem to be getting much better. And so I'd, re- I'd really like for it. I mean, and, for for what it's worth, like I I wore a watch for. I mean, you didn't, I don't right. believe. Nah. But I wore a watch for a number of years before I got the Apple Watch. Was your display always on? And so my display was always on, and so I could always just glance. That's all I had to do was glance at it. Now I know the time. Didn't know anything else. <laughs> but now I know the time. <laughs> but the time is an important part of the watch. The time is an important part of life. I mean, it's this human construct that you gotta. You got to be a part of. So I, I really, I, I would love for there to be, I, I do wonder though, for an always on display, it can't be your normal watch face. And I do think that they would really have to get the animation right between what is always on and what it becomes when you actually turn it toward yourself. Now, maybe it could be, do you use the Siri watch face ever? No. You use modular. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. my primary. Yeah. So that's what I use most of the time. I've been trying to use the Siri one a little bit more, especially since they Siri released, suggestions. You're really going to want it. Since they released, you know, a lot of like now third party apps are going to be able to get in, you know, be a part of that. So I wonder in that case, if it could just be like the time in the upper right hand corner, and that's all you that's all you get. It's always on. Maybe it's a little yeah. dimmer. Maybe and to start, right? Like just, a first step. Right. Unless unless you turn it towards yourself. And now those Siri suggestions come in at the bottom of it. The rest of the display kind of fills out. You could talk to Siri now if you want to. Um so I don't know. I mean, I see I see some potential there that I would love to come to fruition. I like, that. I like to hear it. Cause I just wasn't sure. It is, it's, it's interesting yeah. that you do, do you know, see more do of you that. you know about turning the digital crown on the Siri watch face? So you see these two, they're usually just kind of random stuff, but if you turn the crown, then it starts going through kind of everything it has thought about mm-hmm. bringing to your attention, which once you have a lot of third party stuff in there and, and if, if Siri can, and it, 
they've claimed that it's going to try to be more proactive, right? Right. To, to basically notice that, Hey, three times so far, whenever you leave work, you sent this, you know, you kicked off this shortcut, you know, to send your ETA to your wife. So at that point, it seems like if Siri is smart, like it should be, then it's going to be sitting right there on your watch face and you just tap and you're done, you know, um, which would be, be great. I mean, it really would be great. I, I don't know how much you use, um, the, uh, suggested apps like when you slide down occasionally so yeah I, I i use that a whole bunch i mean i just kind of i know where like eight of my most frequently used apps are and i'll go tap those most of them on my you know first screen of course but for almost every other app i search for it or what i really do is i slide down and darn near 85 percent of the time I mean, if it's something that i use at least you know, once every couple of days, it's usually sitting there. Um, and I mean, like one that I don't know where it is on my screen, but I use it a whole lot is like our baby monitor app. But like if I put the kids down for a nap and then I pull down, like it's almost always there when I'm when I put the kids down at night and I pull down, it's almost always there. And I don't really notice like when I'm at work and I'm working in the morning and I pull down like my uh, my um, uh, what's it called? Like mo- mobile pass that we used for like you know, VPN codes to get mm-hmm. on, um, for like two factor stuff. Like that's almost always, th- always there, you know, and I have no idea where I actually lives on my phone, but I don't have to, I don't have to search for it too frequently. Um, it's really nice. I mean, I've been impressed with a lot of the suggestions. And so, um, if it could notice a lot of that and bring that to the forefront all the more, I think that's great. You really fall into the potential when you, when, when Siri is trying to do that, you fall into the potential for what Siri sometimes ends up being, which is like, no, like what in the world? Why would you ever think that I want to do that? You know? Um, cause I can just, I, I can just see it being like, you like sports. They're about to start a rugby match on ESPN. You gonna watch it? It's like, <laughs> well, no, like not at all. I, I don't understand you, Siri. So, I, I do think there, there's a fine line between incredibly, incredibly useful and just really bothersome. But to me, those suggested apps, for one, which is kind of to me the the closest analog to what what they're trying to push more into, has done a really good job. So I'm, I'm hopeful. I say I was most disappointed in watch o- the watch OS segment just because of the series zero Absolutely. stuff. But uh, I would say I'm probably most interested to see hardware in September when we get mm-hmm. to that. Other than the iPad with <laughs> FaceTime. Like, but, really? <laughs> or Face ID, yeah. I think it's number two. For well, me. I think I no, I, I still feel like watch is probably higher because there's no way I'm getting an iPad. There is a way I could probably get a get a new watch absolutely but, uh, and probably probably on iphone se top of this guy <laughs> right. have a watch a second <laughs> tvos um this is going to be pretty short but uh largest collection of 4k hdr movies and then i put a comma and a but because this is something that really bothers me um that no disney like all all their disney stuff no no 4k hdr so really Every time I want to, this is something that's actually important to me now because I do have a 4K TV with HDR that's just incredible. And we'll we'll have to have a podcast about that at some point. But yeah, I mean, like when Last Jedi came out, I was trying to figure out, okay, where am I going to buy this? Movies Anywhere helps with this stress, right? Because now you can buy it on one service and it translates over to the other services, but it it doesn't translate completely because, you know, I, I bought Last Jedi on Vudu because it was the only only streaming platform that had it in 4K HDR, only one. Um, so yes, I do get it on the Apple TV through through iTunes, but it's just 1080p. Hmm. So it's a little frustrating to me. I mean, it still looks marvelous, but if I'm going to watch it on my TV, I'm going to have to go to the Vudu app to watch it, which I do, and it. It's awesome. Looks great, <laughs> but but it's that's a little frustrating to me. So I know they call that out, and it, it's true. Like the Greatest Showman, we bought that. Yeah, it looks great. Sounds great. Um, it's gonna sound even greater soon. But uh, I don't know. Just kind of, I, I hate all of this nonsense between studios, and it's only gonna get worse because you know Disney's gonna have their own streaming service at some point, and 
thankfully we have things like movies anywhere that can kind of help, but it's still frustrating because you really have to be a smart shopper and know what you want and know where to go to get that one version of it for the things that are important. I don't buy a lot of movies anyway, but when I do, I want it to be the best pos- possible you know, version of it. So you do have movies anywhere. Thanks to Disney. For, well, you know, that's right. Yeah. You know, oh, come on. <laughs> Devil edged sword. Yeah. Uh, Dolby Atmos. So I, I still don't understand why there's obviously no technical limitation why they couldn't have had this when the Apple TV 4k came out in the fall. I'm assuming, I mean, I'm assuming it's coming through an update to TVOS and not like I'm going to have to buy a new version of the Apple TV 4k with Dolby Atmos. It's it's just like, why, why now? Like what? I I don't get it, but maybe there's a software component. Have you ever heard, have you ever heard something with Dolby Atmos? It's, it's awesome. It's it's one of those things that obviously is not widespread yet, but and I mean even with so like the TV I have, I have an LG um, OLED TV. I don't have a sound bar, but even the TV itself can still do Dolby Atmos. I mean, it's mm. not going to be as full and 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 awesome as as it would if you had the sound bar. But um, I've only got to watch those through like. LG has like a content app where you can sample some of this stuff. Um, but I'm excited cause I'm like, you know, we have, they're going to update all of the content you've already purchased for free. So a show like the greatest showman, which it's not a great movie to me, but my family loves it. So I'm on board, but Same that here. actually would be a really fun movie to watch with, uh, with Dolby Atmos because it's, you know, the things it's going to do with the sound and the music, it's going to, it's going to be pretty incredible. So I'm actually excited about, I know it was a TVOS was like really minimal. They talked a lot about the, uh, the, um, flyover stuff or what, I forget what they call them. The, the screensavers. Yes. But, which you're going to be able to actually know where they're from. Yeah, right? and, they're actually great. I mean, they are incredible, especially the, the 4k versions. It's just like, wow. I mean, you know, if we're watching a show and then I, I turn the show off. I rarely will turn the TV off. I'll just let it turn itself off after mesmerizing. And it's, yeah, I mean, it's like, wow, this is the ones with traffic are my favorite, like the beaches and stuff. I I, I like the ones with the beach where it's like, you can see the long boardwalk and, but yeah, I'll catch myself staring at it. I'm like, what am I doing? Um, so the space ones are going to be, they're going to be cool, but I mean, you know, come on, this isn't, this is the, the feature you're announcing for this platform. Like this stuff wouldn't, I think about WWDC a year ago and how cram packed that was really the last two, this never would have made it in, you know, if it was a year like that. So all of this stuff just keeps playing in the back of my head as we're going through. But, um, and I love the way that they ended the segment. So that's TVOS. <laughs> It's the only one where they said, so that's TVOS. Yeah, I love that. Any, uh, so you have, you have the fourth gen, right? Is is Correct. it fourth gen? Yeah. Fourth gen Apple TV, not 4k, but you, you have that model, right? I mean, there's really no significant difference between them other than the 4k and the HDR, but, Correct. um, I love it. I didn't get mine until I guess earlier this year. Uh, and, and everyone complains, right? About the Siri remote, but. I actually really like the the function of the remote. Now, you know, the design or whatever, I don't really care. I mean, the the model I have has the the little lip around the menu button, so I don't get confused. I could see how that could be confusing on the, the other model. But Siri on there is awesome. I use it all the time when I'm searching for, for shows, and I, I just love it. I think it's... It's such an improvement over the the last gen because I had the the third gen Apple TV and obviously it's going to be an improvement, but I just didn't realize how big of an improvement it, it, it was. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. Um, we have a we actually have a, a rubber case on our on our Apple TV remotes so that tells you which direction we're supposed to go. Yeah, it, 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 the rubber covers the bottom, and then obviously doesn't cover the top because that's where the trackpad is. And uh, so I mean that's that's helped a lot and uh i've liked having that but i mean like the, the 10 second skip like I, I love being able to do that um i also i really enjoy the 
the asking Siri, like, what did they just say? And then it goes back 15 seconds and turns on subtitles for 30 seconds and then automatically turns the subtitles off um, just so that you can see like what they said in that, that little snippet of time. Um, I find it, I find it really great for that. I also, I mean, the, the ESPN app on the Apple TV is just really excellent. It is crazy how much effort they've put into features with that. Like the, yeah, it, it's incredible. Yeah. And during, I mean, during college football season, I'll have, I'll have four games on there and I'll, you know, pull one of them in and push one of them out based on, you know, commercial breaks or, you know, lead changes or wh- wh- whatever it is, you know, and it's really nice too, because if you have a big enough TV that you're not far enough from, you can put them in all the, diff- in all the four corners and then just track pad around to just change the audio that you're hearing. Um, so that, that can be really nice. Um, so I think, I, I think that, you know, there's, there's a lot said about how, you know, Tim Cook, obviously when they came out with this Apple TV talked about how the future of TV is, is apps and how that's sort of not the case, except for to me, like it really is. It though. pretty much yeah. is though. Like I, I understand, uh, th- the way that it's not is that a good bit of it, like you still need, like you still need a cable login for so much stuff. Um, as long as you can get one of those, like it all, it all kind of works out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, so if you have a, if you have a good enough family, it can all, right. can all yeah. work out. Yeah. Um, but really like we watch a whole lot of Netflix and Hulu and Amazon prime and all, all sorts, you know, those sort of things. And those are only through apps. Those are yeah. not available. Do in you, other do way. you use the TV app? much i i have some um i use it a lot yeah because they'll you know K- kanan or declan they'll ask me hey can we watch this whatever it is like and i'm like i don't know i don't or they may not even have something specific in their mind like a specific title but they want to watch some batman thing or something like that or some lego show like they don't have a specific one in mind but so i'll just go there and search and then, you know, it it shows me what the options are. And I've been so surprised how many times, uh, like the other day, Declan found a book in the library and it had this these characters on it that I'd never even heard of before. And um, I can't even remember. It's like some airplane show. But he was like, can we watch this? I don't know. Let's go see. And it was the show that was on Amazon Prime. And so... Is it Super Wings? Yes, it was Super Wings. Oh, it's rampant in this house. I've never even heard of it. He has this book. I have no idea where he got the book. And he says, can we watch this? I go to the TV app, search for Super Wings. Boom, done. Yeah, I mean, the only real hard part about the TV app is that Netflix is nowhere to be found. Yeah. So, um, I mean, other than that, it works really well. I'll, I'll tell you, the TV app... Uh, and obviously they could have done this in a number of ways, but they've done it through the TV app. So like Arkansas baseball, um, like you can set it as one of your favorite. I mean, you can do this with any of them. This is where I get into a little trouble with trying to avoid spoilers, but like college baseball, if it's live, I'd love to watch it. But if not, like you can tell me the score. It's just one of those that works out that way. And, and I never really know if the SEC network is going to happen to have Arkansas playing baseball on or not, or um, uh, most of the time it's like ESPN three too, which is all fine and good because like the Apple TV will just allow you to just tell me that you want to be told. And then I'll tell you when, when they're starting. <laughs> yeah. um, and then, and even it's really cool because you can be watching something on the Apple TV and it will bring a notification in the upper right corner on your TV and you can just click it and it'll immediately just take you to the baseball game. And if you weren't so, if you weren't so spoiler averse, then you can have it tell you about like any close game that is out there. So, I mean, during like an NBA season, say if there's an NBA game that is, you know, some team winning by two points with a minute left, then it'll just, it'll just let you know and you can go, go watch it. If it's, if it's streaming somewhere, you know, if it's on ESPN or if it's on, mm-hmm. um, wherever else a NBA game. All this be. to say, Apple TV, fourth gen, 
It's awesome. It's good. Like it's really, really good. good. Yeah, I feel like it gets. So I think it's more because of TVOS being kind of boring and not getting a ton of updates. Then they make promises that they're not really not going to have any way to fulfill. But the product itself is really good. And if you have a 4K television and you're getting into that market of wanting 4 4K content, man, it it's good. It's good stuff. All right, last but certainly not least, this was probably my favorite section of of the keynote. Uh, new Mac OS Mojave. Did I say that right? I've heard Mojave and Mojave. I think it's Mojave. That's what Craig said. But then Tim came up later and said Mojave. Uh, but, you know, he's, he's Alabaman. Is that a word? I don't even know. Yes. Albanian? No, Alabam- <laughs> Alabaman. Yeah. So who knows? Who knows? Who can trust him anyway, right? Um, and they come out of the gates. We love the Mac. It makes me sad that they feel like they have to say that on stage, but I guess they, I guess they do. They I mean, need to. I don't know, I mean, man. You know, I feel action, like actions speak louder than words, as they say. Yeah, you say that, but I, I don't know. I just I don't feel sad or nervous about the Mac, but I think maybe more of that comes from the hardware side than necessarily like I, I can see complaints about Mac OS. I can see how people could feel upset about that side. But like to me, I'm like, they're still making really great hardware. And I, I don't know. Like I have no complaints there. Now again, granted our last episode, I did say that my favorite Mac of all time was this 27 inch 5K iMac. And it's still the case today. Nothing has changed in the, the last two weeks. Um, the, the, the big thing they highlight here is dark mode, which again, I'm kind of, kind of like, uh, we're talking about the stocks app here and, and, and iOS 12, if dark modes, your leading feature, I just, I don't know. Like, is it really, is it really that good of a release? But I'm excited about it. Don't get me wrong. I will definitely use dark mode, but when that's your, your, your lead, I'm just like, eh. But granted, they haven't had much to lead with in the last few years. That's just awe-inspiring. It does just make me all the more disappointed, though, that they don't have dark mode on iOS. <laughs> Maybe that's why they did it. It's almost like just salt, to mess with it. It's almost just like salt in the wound. Because <laughs> particularly with your OLED screen, yeah. a dark mode would be so yes. solid. It would be so great. Dark and mode on overcast, it's great. It's great, Love right? It. And dark mode in messages would be awesome because it's just so white. <laughs> <laughs> Safari yeah. is just, I mean, so white. I mean, so much of it is just so bright. And especially, I mean, if you're in the dark, like there's not really a non bright setting mm-hmm. when you're looking at, yeah. at certain apps. And it seems so. Uh, it seems so automatic to me, but I mean, I've seen, you know, the recent, uh, I saw a recent tweet from uh, Guillermo Rambo, who just has an incredible name. Just what a name. But that dude finds stuff like nobody's business. You follow Guillermo Rambo? Mm-hmm. So Guillermo Rambo is, you follow Stephen Trout and Smith. Mm-hmm. So you should follow both of them. They, they tear up the, the, uh, the APIs and just find all, all the things. Um, like, like Guillermo Rambo, found the um face id setup ui in the ipad <laughs> right <laughs> um, surprise right hey yeah. uh but one of the things he said is that he hasn't seen anything to indicate that there is any dark mode to be had in ios which just really disappoints me because i i just think that, that seems to me like low-hanging fruit that would really Maybe they're just waiting for all their phones to be OLED. Maybe, but that'll why? take forever. Yeah, yeah. there's no that reason. Sense. There's no reason to wait. I mean, uh, granted, I mean that's a lot of. There's a lot of design to be had there, and you don't want to screw that up, of course. But but if um, they can do it on Mac OS, and it looked, I mean, it looks great. <laughs> it looked like. Um, you know, I mean, it didn't look like it was too difficult to do. Now I I have no idea what it, what it really takes to do that, but it can't be, it can't be that 
that heavy of a lift on iOS, I would you're, think. You would think not. I, I'm excited about dark mode. I will definitely use it. I did find out today, this was just random and completely unrelated, but today I found out how to turn my menu bar and my dock dark, which I did. And I thought it was awesome. <laughs> now I'm like, oh, well, if everything was like that, that would be even better, especially as long as, I mean, the work I'm doing most of the time when I'm on that iMac it's it you know it's a, it's a strain on my eyes <laughs> editing video granted premiere is pretty dark anyway but you know if everything else was was dark i could just see that being helpful but yeah i get i get your point though like <laughs> it just makes everything else glaring on why do we still not have a dark mode on ios um dynamic desktop sounds kind of neat but you know who cares? Stocks again. <laughs> it's like this app is never going away. Uh, gallery view, which is basically just cover flow brought back to life. I, I didn't really understand what was so special about that. It did bring up a question for me though. What, uh, what kind of view are you? Are you a list view guy? Are you a icon view guy? Are you a column view guy? Uh, I mean, it depends on what I'm looking at. Personally, I'm a column view guy for most activities. The only time I'll change it to, I call it, is it the icon view where you, mm-hmm. you have the icons, is if I'm working with a folder that's just images. That's usually the only time I'll change it to icon view. And mm-hmm. that's that's when I'm like doing a website update or something for, for the magazine. But um, otherwise, I'm column view all the way and I get very upset when it switches to list view because list view is disgusting. But... Maybe I shouldn't say that because you might be a list view guy. I don't know. No, so so list. Yeah, I don't understand list view. Right? It just seems very limiting. Yeah, it's um, yeah, yuck. No, I mean I'm I'm largely like if I'm looking at multiple from scrolling through it all, I'm gonna go columns. Um, but then I mean I'm looking at icons. If I'm looking at just a Several, yeah. several of them. I think I will use this gallery view though, because of some of the stuff they were showing with these quick actions, um, it looked pretty awesome. And then the fact that it was contextual and that you could customize it. I mean, there some of the, that you can create little workflows that, um, they showed this one about watermarking a PDF. I, th- I thought about, wow. I mean, what if I just grabbed a bunch of images and I could set up, you know, a little, little button to watermark these images. I mean, they're some of the stuff they were doing with it was, was really neat. Um, and I love the stuff that they've done to quick look with the markup. That looks awesome too. Cause I use quick look, quick look quite a bit and, um, you know, being able to just easily pull that up, sign a document or whatever it is. I don't know, man, that just, I like that. I like that a lot. Screenshots. This is another thing. Cause I, <laughs> I screenshot all the time. Um, I probably do do too many screenshots throughout the day. You know, it, it's I blame Slack mostly because it's just like boom, send it. You know, be done with it. Um, but I like how there's there's times where they bring iOS elements into macOS where it just works right and it just makes sense. I think this is going to be one of those because. Um, Having this little new HUD. Well, basically, the screenshots works just like it does on iOS now, right? Where mm-hmm. you take the screenshot and then it pops up. I guess it was on the bottom right. And then you can pull that up to, you know, easily do some markup or whatever whatever the tool sets they had. Um, but this new HUD, too, is pretty cool. And I really like what they're doing with the screen capture because I use screen capture all the time. And I, I'm assuming... Uh, they didn't show this, but I mean, I'm assuming because today it used QuickTime to do screen capture. So I'm assuming that's still the underlying, but they didn't show that, you know? So I wonder um, how that will work because, you know, if you, if you need to get in there or if it, they're just taking that interface out and just automatically saving it for you. I, I don't know. I had some questions around that, but um excited for that. And this continuity camera stuff was Granted, I don't know how much this would be used, but it was pretty neat. Like the the demos they were showing of taking a photo and or scanning, and it just automatically moving to your phone to to do that. Um, 
again, I don't know how many use cases there are for that, but the stuff they were showing these these little features, I was like, yes, because I just up, <laughs> upgraded to High Sierra and crickets, man. I mean, like the only thing I was excited about was, oh, finally I can have my pen notes like I do in iOS 11 because that was really frustrating <laughs> to not have access to those. Um, I mean, they did a lot of other stuff in High Sierra around in Safari specifically, but you could, you could download Safari. Those you, you got those benefits without having to be on High Sierra. So, mm-hmm. in terms of just number of features and some of the cool stuff that I could see myself using, like yeah, I'm ready for Mojave, but it'll probably be a year before I get to use it because the only Max I have that can run um, this will be you know my work Max. So it's gonna be a while before I can can do that. Um, and then they they showed off uh, four apps that this was like their sneak peek, right? Of this, uh, project marzipan. Is that the word? I always, I always mess that word up, but this is kind of them saying, Hey, we know the rumors have been out there. Yes, it's real, but Hey, it's going to be a while, right? Before, but here, here are four examples of how we've been able to do this. And I thought it was interesting that you called this out earlier, which makes sense, but it's really iPad apps, right? I mean, that's really, what they're going to be bringing over. Cause that just makes the most sense with orientation and, and just, you know, real Size. estate. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean these, these apps, they showed them at the top except for voice memos and, and home the, well stocks and, and news they showed. Right. And then we get all the way to the other presentation and boom, here they are again, basically. Right. I mean, it's the same app. So pretty cool use case for showing how this project marzipan thing could really play out and bring some cool stuff. And because they, 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 I don't remember if they said this exact. Yeah. I mean, I I think they said it on stage, right? Like we want to reinvigorate Mac OS, right. And with, with new apps and, and they talked a lot about the Mac app store. I don't really, I don't know. I don't care about that that much, but, um, Hey, we've got this (laughs) plethora of apps on iOS and they were very specific to call out, hey, we think some of these apps would make sense on the Mac. They weren't just like, hey, let's bring all 35 gazillion of these things over. Um, there are certain apps that it's going to make sense for, and they're trying to make it easier to do that. That makes me excited. And the fact that they do come out and say, hey, yeah, this is this is real. Like, this is happening. It's going to, they said, multi-year project. But um if I'm a Mac OS guy or I'm a Mac person that's been jaded the last few years, I feel like you got to feel a little bit better about things after this. Well, I think too, it, it also is interesting that this is a catalyst to more iPad apps too. Yeah. So you yeah. have, so you have these apps that have that's only a good lived point. on iPhone and because of the Mac, now they come to iPad. And I think that you could end up seeing that happen. Um, and, Maybe and, that's really their end ways. goal. <laughs> 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 they just, they can't say that. No, 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 no. Of course yeah. not. Um, absolutely. They cannot say that. <laughs> um, but I mean, I think it's a nice, that's a nice byproduct, you know, um, of, of, of this. So that could be, that could be cool too. One of the things they did in high Sierra was around like, locking down autoplay of videos and, and Safari. And, um, they did some stuff around like tracking, you know, so they could stop tracking, uh, from websites. And then they kind of up the ante here in Mojave with a really direct jab at, at Facebook. I mean, like pulling no punch. I mean, Facebook's easy to, to kick these days, but, um, I don't know what you think about that. Like, were you surprised? I mean, they, you know, they're, really not pulling any punches. Yeah. They, if they ever do that with anything, it's privacy. Cause I think they really do feel like that is just a, a win for them. I mean, anytime they can, they can show that they're, they actually care about privacy more than darn near any other company. I feel like, you know, they feel like that's a, that's an easy win for them. So uh, I think that's something they look, they look to, to go towards And it, it seems like they actually care about that 
sort of thing, um, arguably as well. So I said this at the beginning, we aim to put the customer at the center of everything we do. You feel, you feel like that's a true statement based on what they release here, not just in Mac OS, but across the line. I don't even know what that statement means. <laughs> I feel like uh, screen time, notifications. That's true. No, you're right. There's a lot of stuff in there. And uh, I don't know. I just thought that was a... They hit that hard at the outset. And now TVOS, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you're going to get that free Adobe Atmos. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'm trying to remember something that... Gerber has said in the past, which is that whenever Apple is making a decision, then it's largely like Apple, who is priority number one when they're making a decision. Customers are second, and then developers a lot of times are, if anyone's going to get left out in the cold, it's it's developers. Um, and so I think that that is very true. It's just that, like, to me, like, screen time helps Apple out. I mean, like, like the current zeitgeist is very much coming together against just yeah, I mean, Google, sinking time into Google and our features right? like course, this too, right? Know, Earlier. Digital yeah. well-being um, features. And so I, I think that, I think there's a, there's a lot to be said for the fact that how much is that caring for the customer and how much is that caring that they stay a customer? You know, yeah. that the, the customer continues to be a customer. Um, and I mean, where that Venn diagram meets, it's just a fine place to be like, you know, that, that's not necessarily a bad thing um, to be had. I do think that the one feature of the Mac that is actually going to mean the most to you, especially is AirPod audio mm. auto switching. Yeah. How's that going to work, though? So the auto switching part. So, uh, tweet that I because found. let me tell you. Go ahead. Do you use AirPods much on on Mac OS? I don't. Okay, it's not great right right now. I usually have to click it several times before it'll finally connect. Um, and then if I like, I was using it today. I was working from home and I had to get on a. Um, well, I was. I can't remember what I was doing. I was watching something, but um, it's finally working. And then you know I fiddle with the case a lot. I flip open the cap and then it just disconnects because it's like <laughs> it doesn't like that. Yeah. So anything that they can do to make this a better experience, I've gotten to the point where I just don't even use my AirPods when I'm on the Mac anymore. I'll just use, you know, like my mm-hmm. work headset because it's just easier. Um, so, yeah. Tell That's me how sad. they're going to make this better. <laughs> so Justin Searles on Twitter says since installing iOS 12 and Mojave, my AirPods have automatic have actually automatically connected to the device I was actively using when I put them on. Well, it's going to make my life better in a year because <laughs> I'm not going to be on I mean, Mojave. I mean, until... But any of this, you know, it's not coming yeah. to you in a year. But so I think that sounds, but really honestly, like that sounds great from, if that can happen between iOS devices, that'd be awesome. True. Too. I, 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 I wonder, do frequently switch between the iPad and the, and the So you the do that. I switch between two iPhones mm. frequently, um, especially because I play on the eight on the way to work so that I can use the Verizon network, which is much better. But then one thing I've noticed is that since my watch is connected to my personal SE, I really want that to be what is playing the podcast when I'm at work doing work, because when an ad pops up, I want to tap, tap, tap. Um, and, and, and so like when I'm going into work, I I will sync the two of them, you know, uh, which overcast works pretty well on. Um, and, and so I'll I'll do that and then continue on. But then as I'm walking out, kind of doing the same thing, um, to switch back to kind of, the CarPlay phone, um, from the, from the, the, you know, work during the day phone, so to speak. So I, I would love to just, if I'm using it and I hit play and I've got my AirPods in, just play it there. 
you know? Yeah. Because if I'm hitting play on one of them and I've, if I've got my AirPods in and they were connected to another one, but I'm not playing anything on that one, you know, it's, it's one thing if I'm playing a podcast on the SE with my, you know, listen to it on my AirPods and then I go to the aid, start playing something. Obviously it's uh, obviously it's probably, it shouldn't take over. Right. It should probably take, probably play out loud and do all, all that sort of thing. But if I'm not playing anything on the SE anymore and I'm playing it on, on the, the eight, well, Go for it. Take over the AirPods. I mean, they're not being used for anything. There's been uh, reports from some on Twitter have been using iOS 12 that say that AirPods connection is improved. Um, that I mean, this guy also said that it also auto switches audio to and from the Mac. Um, honestly, like if if AirPods could be more rock solid, that would be a great feature of iOS 12 because I was just thinking about this. I think my most used Apple device are the AirPods. Yeah, for now, sure. The iPhone actually the iPhone obviously has to serve what I'm listening to yeah. on the AirPods. But I'm not actually I'm not actually using it at that point. Like once it's just playing, 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 one podcast to another, I'm not actually using it at that point. So as far as like active usage, AirPods are by far and away the most used Apple device. And there's a fair bit of flakiness of flakiness still with AirPods. Um, it's a little bit better than it was. And I, I probably misremember how bad it was when they very, very um, first came out. But it doesn't seem like it's way less flaky. Like there's definitely just a, a reason, a reason, a, a kind of average amount of flakiness with them and i would love for there not to be um i mean there, there's a fair amount of times when it just doesn't seem to like like the timing that i put it into like all real quick just like pause and then like listen to what somebody says for two seconds and then tap tap to play it again and it just like doesn't like how quickly i wanted to go back and forth and so then it just like bails out of overcast and now it's just like, I don't know what you want me to play. I guess if you hit it again, I'll play one of your music songs. But, you know, I've, I've kind of bailed out of, of Overcast and back to like my default audio um, state. And it's I hate like, when it does that. I, yeah. And now I got to go all the way back into Overcast and play the podcast. And so, I mean, those sort of things, like I would love for it to just be to be less, less flaky doing that sort of thing. I've also had it where... Um, where if I'm listening on one and I have the other one in the case and I pull the other one out of the case, this happens to be on phone calls more than audio, I, I feel. But if I have one in the case and I'm listening, I'm only using one for a phone call and then I pop, pop the other one out of the case so I can put both of them in. Like I'll put the other one in and it'll just stay on that one for a good long while yeah. until finally it picks up on this one. And uh, so, I mean, those sort of things, I feel like there's, I feel like there's a lot to, yeah, there's, we had there. there's weirdness between how sometimes it's so quick and a lot of times it's so slow. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, what's the difference? Oh, sometimes it's, I, I've also had a, more instances recently of, of I take one out I say something to somebody and then I put it back in and it doesn't start back up. Or sometimes it takes like five seconds to start back up to where I'm really like, oh, I don't think it's going to start back up and like i do remember like six months ago like it was just like pretty rock solid that like you took it out you put it back in start right back up and i love that about it well i mean we're getting close to the next release so <laughs> obviously apple's doing something to make them worse certainly certainly <laughs> it, was a, it was a good good wwdc yeah i mean Listen, I've made jokes along the way of what does this say about this <laughs> keynote that we're talking about the stocks app so many times, but I mean, yeah, it was, it was good. It was, it was well-balanced, no hardware. I know people want hardware, but this just really isn't the, the, the last, well, I guess, I guess last year they did have some hardware announcements around, you know, MacBook pros and stuff. And, and Certainly people are clamoring for like some, it. some better keyboards, uh, on, on this current generation of MacBook Pro. Last, last year they came up with the 10.5. Was it there? Yeah. Okay. But it wasn't, they didn't actually release it though until the fall, right? No, they released it in the summer. 
Yeah, like end of June. Did they do the 12.9 too then? Because yeah. they did them at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't remember. That's all right. Thanks. <laughs> See, it was, it was hardware rich last year. Um, and I mean, nobody was, nobody was really expecting that. I mean, people are hoping for MacBook Pro. Maybe I'm thinking of the uh, two years ago. Hardware just seems to take Apple a long time. I mean, and hard, hardware's, <laughs> hardware's sort of tough. I mean, um, so... You know, it takes it takes however long it takes. I, I just do feel like the hardware they have right now, other than I mean, I haven't faced any any of the problems with the keyboard. And maybe if I had, I mean, maybe if this MacBook Pro had had issues with that, I'd have to be in and out of the Apple store. I'd feel differently about it. Right now, I just feel like their hardware is really solid. Like I'm not that I'm not that f- fraught about the fact that. You know, they didn't come out with anything and stuff has been, it's been a year since they, you know, updated things. It's like, well, they'll update it. Like it'll come. Um, and when it comes, then <laughs> it'll, it'll be great. You know, I mean, I, I, I really feel like the hardware they're coming out with is, is really, is really good, you know? So I, I trust that whatever they do come out with, whenever they come out with it, will be, will be great. Like these iPads in the fall. Like these iPads. These face ID iPads. Oh Oh boy. That's gonna be something else. One feature I forgot to mention about Mojave. Stacks. Oh yes. I'm really excited about this because this could benefit so many people I know at work. (laughs) The only problem, Philip. Tell me, Levi. They're Windows users. Yes, of course. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh, 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 God. Oh,